Well, it's going to take me a second. I feel a little bit like a high school baseball player pinch hitting for Derek Jeter this morning. <laughs> I appreciate you coming out. Uh, 30 years, Sherry, 1983, Marble Collegiate Church. What a blessing, what a blessing those years were and what a blessing you and Billy and your family have been in our lives. And in this room are several people that were instruments in Billy's decision to go into the ministry. And for all of you, we together give thanks for that decision and what a difference he's made in the lives of so many people here. So this morning, my goal is for you, when you leave here, to have memorized these first five verses of Psalm 103. We can do it. You can do it. Uh, I talked to a, uh, a parent of a grade schooler the other day that was working hard to get his youngster to memorize the multiplication tables. Nobody memorizes anymore. Three generations ago, poems, psalms, everything. Now the reason I think it's important is this. So many times in my life, when I've gotten to a tough spot, and I'm a little twisted and mm, into my mind comes Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Or the doxology. Those things that we memorize by the grace of God, the very one we need in that moment, finds its way into our life. And what a blessing that is. So, I'm going to use the word blessed because it's the one I learned. I learned, bless the Lord, O my soul. Now you think for a moment about that. Jerry, ever can bless God? Oh, my goodness, wow. What a humongous wow. I, you, we all can bless God. The psalmist says so. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And all that is within me, bless God's holy name. Say that, all right? Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And all that is within me, bless God's holy name. Wow. Wow. You did good. You did good. We'll, piece of cake. You can bless God, I can bless God. It's interesting when we see in the next verse, bless the Lord my soul and forget not all God's benefits. It's interesting, I think, that the psalmist turns our eyes and our blessing God back to God, not on ourselves. You know, if someone said, Jerry, how do you bless God? Well, I bless God when I truly worship. You know, and I bless God when I say my prayers and meditate, and I bless God when I study, and I bless God when I'm doing acts of service, and I bless God when I'm tithing, especially tithing. I think that's the most difficult of all. I was a Wesley Foundation director. That's a Methodist student center at East Tennessee State University before I retired. And I worked hard on trying to get college students to begin tithing then, because if you can begin tithing when you make $100 a week, or $20 a week, or whatever they made a week, it's a whole lot easier to tithe after you start making that big salary. And I said, do you trust God? They say, of course I trust God with all your heart. Sure, with all my heart. Which is it easier to do, trust God with your heart or trust God with your billfold? Most of us would say the most difficult part of trusting God is with our billfold. To turn loose of that and put that in God's control is a powerful way of blessing God. But the psalmist doesn't say, do this and this and this like a good Christian. 
the psalmist turns our eyes back toward God and says, all God's benefits. Don't forget, remember. And when you do that, you bless God. Interesting, I think. Christian dedication out of appreciation for all that God has done for me is so much easier than Christian dedication saying, well, a good Christian ought to this and this and this and this. One gives energy, one drains energy. So we've got these two verses. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless God's holy name. Say it. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all God's benefits. And then five, five verses that say very clearly what God's benefits are. Who forgives all my iniquities. My little third grade daughter read, granddaughter, whoa, granddaughter read that the other day. And she said, iniquity, what's iniquity? Words we don't use. Forgives all our sins. And I thought it's been a long time since I remember the first time that I felt my sins forgiven and I was free. I think it would be great if each of us fell in love with Jesus all over again for the first time. And we had that feeling of peace and joy clean throughout and forgiven. One of the great, great benefits of God's forgiveness is the ability then for us to forgive. We were doing a uh, Bible study at the Wesley Foundation and we were talking about anger and resentment and bitterness and not forgiving. And this young girl said, you know, I always heard that not forgiving, holding on to a grudge, is like taking poison and hoping someone else dies. And she said that and almost immediately a young man said, yeah, but you don't want to let him off the hook. And I understood what he was saying and immediately out of my mouth came these words. No, you're not letting them off the hook. You're getting their hook out of you. You're forgiving somebody is not for them. You're forgiving somebody is for you. But you say, you don't know how badly I've been hurt, Jerry. I don't have it, the power in me to forgive. Not that. And I say, you're right, you don't. And in counseling, when we were working on forgiveness, I would say to the client, just say these words. And you think of who old so-and-so is in your life. Most of us have an old so-and-so. And I... But whoever that person is that hurt you the most, put their name in here, all right? And just in your mind, say these words. God being my helper, I forgive, oh, so-and-so. And it was so hard for those words, just those words to come out. But once you've said the words, and you say them again the next day, and you say them maybe for 20 days, that knot down in your gut that gets twisted every time that person's name or you think of that person begins to loosen up. And the power of God within you forgives. And you are free from that resentment and that bitterness that just doesn't stay in that one spot, you know, in that one person. It bleeds over into other areas. How important it is to say, God being my helper, I forgive. Who forgives all my iniquities, all my sins. Who heals all my diseases. Isn't this with a very light brush? I don't understand all that. Certainly at this point in my life, God has healed all my diseases. I have people I've prayed and prayed and prayed for that died. Healing and cure are not quite the same thing. 
Some are not cured, but they're healed. And ultimately, we're all healed. All right, so we've got two now. Let's say both of those. You repeat after me. Who forgives all my iniquities. Who heals all my diseases. The third one is who redeems my life from the pit. And the pit is capitalized in most. And if you know you've been anywhere close to the pit, certainly if you've been in the pit, how hugely dark and scary that is. Ah, it is awful. But the psalmist says, redeems my life from the pit doesn't say lifts me out of the pit. Sometimes the pit is the dark night of the soul to move us to a new and different place. Redeems my life from the pit. I love the word redeem. I think somebody wrote a book by that title. Uh, this will tell your age. How many in here remember s and green stamps? That was, uh, that was before fuel perks came along. Well, my mother and two sisters, they got into it about these ugly green s &H green stamps. And the ugly books and how they were on the, co the table and coffee would spill on them and they'd wipe them off and before long the books were all falling apart and I just sort of, <laughs> look at those silly women. I was about 12 till one day on my birthday, my mother said, here are six s &H green stamp books. I looked at it, I said, they didn't have two rubber bands around them, they'd just be all over the floor. They're dirty, what do I do with them? Take them to the redemption center. <laughs> oh, where is it? Well, we'll go. So I walk in, I place those ugly, coffee stain, falling apart, six books of s and green stamps and said, what can I get? And they showed me and I thought, oh my goodness, my first sleeping bag. <laughs> you mean I can turn these ugly, dirty books of s and green stamps and you give me a sleeping bag? And my next door neighbor just got a tent and we can sleep out tonight redeems my life from the pit, crowns me with steadfast love and mercy. Some of you women maybe had a crown, but Cherry, do you ever have a crown placed on your head? Whoa, God says you are my royalty. Crowns me with steadfast love and mercy. and satisfies me with good as long as I live so that my youth is renewed like the eagles. That's one of the things that first struck me about that psalm. Oh, I'd like my youth to be renewed like the eagles. Satisfies. Now I chose this sermon because of right now. You know that song, I think it was Rolling Stones? Can't get no satisfaction? So I'm gonna play Billy and I'm gonna sing. Well, I am one of the Everly brothers. <laughs> can't get no satisfaction, though I try and I try and I try and I try. I can't get no. And boy, you felt that, didn't you? Our culture, that is just the spitting image of where we are. We try and we try and we try and we try. And we can't find that satisfaction. The heart is hungry for God. When God breathed into us the breath of life, God put that hunger for God in us. God-shaped vacuum, heart's restless until it finds its rest in thee. Lots of different ways of saying it. 
I promise you that if your heart is hungry for satisfaction, to be satisfied, nothing will satisfy that hunger but the living God. All right. So we're going to stand. And you're going to give it your best shot, all right? Full attention. First you're going to repeat after me, and then we're going to say it together, all right? Bless the Lord, O my soul. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me, bless God's holy name. And all that is within me, bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And forget not all God's benefits. Who forgives all your iniquities. Who heals all your diseases. Who redeems your life from the pit. Who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy. And satisfies you with good till your heart is renewed like the eagles. Fantastic. You all are good. You all are really good. All right. We're going to say it, and then after the hymn, it's going to be our benediction. Now, here's what I want you to do. When you go home, just get your piece of paper and write out what you remember. And this week, try to think the first thing when you wake up in the morning, bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Now, if you'll do that, wiggle the fingers on your right hand. That's your commitment. I'm going to do that. If we get these words into our soul, our psyche, our mind, they will begin to sing that song within us. And when we're living a life that is seeking to bless the Lord, life is what God intended it to be. All right, you might want to close your eyes. Sometimes I focus better when I close my eyes. You're, we're going to say this together, all right? One, two, three. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all God's benefits, who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good as long as you live so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Blessings, blessings, blessings. Our hymn is, oh, tithes are. <laughs> you know, here I talk about tithing, and I don't forget to take up an offering.